Welcome to the Raven Gallery. We're uh, here with Barry John MBE. He's a Welsh soldier and artist based in Pembrokeshire in West, West Wales. So he has served in the British Armed Forces for over the last 20 years. And currently he is the founder and CEO of VC Gallery, which is the Veterans Community Gallery. Barry, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. And um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to come in and to uh, speak to you. Thank you so much for your time. So yeah. how was it like close to 20, 25 years back when you were doing what you were doing in the armed forces? What was the scenario like at that time? So I come from a um, I come from a really quite kind of quiet background, uh, economically challenged background in Pembrokeshire, a place called Nayland. I'm very proud of where I'm from. I'm proud of my family, but ultimately, I think the the opportunities were very limited there in regards to progression. Um, definitely on an art front, but um, on a career front. So I wanted to tr to challenge myself and do something different. So um, at the age of sixteen, I joined the the armed forces and I joined the Royal Regiment of Wales, which is an infantry regiment, and uh, they were first posted out into Hong Kong. I wanted to go to Hong Kong because I absolutely loved. Um, that kind of culture and uh, I was doing martial arts at the time I'm um, doing Wadaru which is karate so I thought a well, great first posting to go over there and um, and to, to look at doing my black belt in karate over in um, Hong Kong so whilst I was over there for my first posting it was beautiful I, I landed at night time mm -hmm. and um, the skyline was just amazingly bright with neon colors and uh, this landscape and the topography was amazing and I thought to myself as this young 17 year old kind of soldier oh my word this is just amazing it's like I can't get any better than this so you know that made a memory for me that I've I've, I've used in my artwork ever since um mm -hmm. what I term it term it black graffiti where I work black on neon just like I landed when I was a 17 year old in in uh, Hong Kong to start my career so I um I just I just decided that um, whilst I was there, I was going to try to be a good soldier, try to be um, open minded in my career and to try to keep on learning and to listen, to learn, to watch, to see. And I really loved the environment I was in culturally um, and creatively, you know, the night markets and um, the amount of art that was being done. Then I had a post into South Korea and um, I was on the, the DMZ between North and South Korea with the yeah. 8th United States Army. Uh, and the UN and um, on my time off I used to go into Seoul and the street art in Seoul just really informed the kind of colour and form that some of the things I wanted to do mm -hmm. and it wasn't until a little bit later on when I had postings to Northern Ireland and to um, Poland and, uh, and Kosovo that I thought to myself right I really want to start to um, reflect and also paint some of the things I've seen uh, you know, some of the amazing sites, some of the more tragic ones, some of the moral messages of what I've seen through my career. Mm -hmm. And that that's that's what I thought to myself. After seeing all the graffiti in, in Seoul and Korea and also in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. but ultimately the street art in Northern Ireland was very powerful, mm -hmm. politically, emotionally, um, you know, sending these messages. And I thought, gosh, you know, it's such a really great tool uh, artists were well, great medium to be able to to get emotions and to put a message and to have a voice and to also look at form. So I decided when I was in the military, then I wanted to 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 do more art, um, and uh, which was a great a great opportunity. And the military allowed me to do that. They mm -hmm. really wanted to nurture that that level of um, what I wanted to do as a profession. So by proxy of that, I became a war artist because I started to collect some of the things I'm seeing. And um, and then I was selling some of my artworks to to some major galleries and to regimental museums and to um, um, what they call the sergeants and officers messes. So I started to get my my artwork into lots of different areas and had exhibitions in 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 some military places and military museums. And uh, and then I won Armed Forces Painter of the Year, um, which kind of propelled me to want really want to do more with it. But I was also studying mental health within the military and trauma risk injury management. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of the um, trying to find out about different ways of um, of treating people and, and to give them a level of care whilst I was in the military. And I wanted to develop that both mm -hmm. privately, professionally, 
and emotionally with the art. Mm -hmm. So I was given lots of opportunities to do that. And um, and then I just thought to myself one day when I get out of the military, I'm going to, you know, besides being a professional graffiti artist, I wanted to also give people the level of opportunity that I had to express and to paint and to look at all the mediums that are out there for people, you know, be it photography, be it filmmaking, be it poetry, you know, and, uh, you know, all all of the techniques of art that comes with the materials from charcoals to soft pastels to oils, acrylics, spray paints, you know. So I really wanted to, um, you know, utilise a little bit of the experiences I picked up and also the passion and then started a, a small charity of my own um, that gives people to do that. And um, and today, after um, leaving the Army you know, 10 years ago this December, um, I sit in a, in a in a school that that we've purchased as a charity and every room has a discipline. Um, you know, everyone from learning difficulties to counselling, to drug and alcohol work, mm -hmm. um, to work with art in all its forms, to reading rooms, to podcasts, to places where you can do poetry and to do film. Mm -hmm. um, and even to cook is a level of artistry in in food and uh, delivering food so so the vc gallery tries to provide that um, mm -hmm. across the board so Definitely, yeah um so just wanted to touch upon a couple of points you mentioned that you were based in a lot of places where there's a lot of cultural diversity there's a lot of the political scenario itself you know it can be extremely challenging so is there any particular incident or something where you've felt like, oh, this is something that I want to portray in my art, this particular thing that I saw right now? Yeah, I was I was in Northern Ireland, mm -hmm. um, near London Derry, so that's quite north of North uh, mm -hmm. Northern Ireland. And um, there was a lot of children there with, with, with a lot of prejudices against, against British soldiers. And um, a lot of my junior soldiers didn't understand the reason why that was. Um, and ultimately we had the opportunity to chat to these young people who who were who were chucking uh, rocks and um, bottles full of urine at us and spitting at us and um, being really aggressive and we, we had the opportunity to kind of speak to them and um, and it was because of, of of this this cultural difference that we've got um, mm -hmm. both religiously you know emotionally mm -hmm. and geographically and what we wanted to try to say to them is, look, we're Welsh, we, we live quite close, you know, in Great Britain. Um, we don't hate you, you know, we're just here trying to peacekeep. And um, and you, we give a bit, a little bit of understanding and kindness to these people and um, and, and the people we were talking to, and these children. And um, and their response was 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 quite emotional, really. And um, the, the, their aggression was lowered. Um, and we didn't have that much trouble at, uh, from them after after doing that human emotion and just speaking and, and communicating well um, whilst we're on, on patrol. And um, so I, I made a, an artwork called Nurture Nature, where if you, you're getting you're getting negative stereotypes, you're getting prejudice, you're getting anger, you're getting violence, then ultimately you, you could you could nurture that yourself to become that. And um, and I did a piece of art with this young person with a hoodie on, um, mm -hmm. presenting his rifle, you know, to his future. Mm -hmm. And it was called Nurture Nature. And it's, it's a graffiti composition. And I exhibited it in um, the Edwin Young Gallery in Salisbury um, over over 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so I haven't got that piece. It, it, I sold it, but um, um, it, 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 was a, it was one that resonates with me. Mm -hmm. um a lot you know i've done very very you know powerfully kind of narrative mm -hmm. uh the artworks I've, I've done quite a lot of them if mm -hmm. i'm honest that was that's one of your i think most um popular ones right in the sense something that you hold very deeply and very dearly to you i i suppose i suppose it's one of them um ultimately city at nights with riots was the one i won the prize for um, that went into the regimental museum and that's basically about a riot in Belfast at night um, and um, it was done with, with with thick graffiti oils and uh, it was um, yeah it was exhibited in Chelsea and uh, uh, and again in Salisbury and in London so um, 
and it was bought by my by my commanding officer um, for the regimental museum. So that was a that was a great um, great piece to start. Mm -hmm. a narrative of me becoming a professional artist that's brilliant brilliant i think um in terms of like the nature and nurture right it's it's also a very interesting concept because um there's this whole theory in psychology that goes where um children when when they grow up there's these two concepts nature versus nurture so which one has more kind of influence nature would be something you know that your parents kind of imbibe you with during a childhood the things that they teach you the things that are heredity and all of that but then but the nurture would be the environment that you grow in the kind of cultures that you're exposed to and which one has more kind of influence and which one do you give more weightage to and how both of them holistically you can you know shape yourself as a person so i think that that is a very interesting concept that you've kind of like yeah without a doubt yeah without a doubt that's exactly yeah yeah that's exactly what i was you know looking at at that yeah. point and yeah yeah that, that's definitely a narrative i wanted to, to try to achieve mm -hmm. yeah in terms of like the graffiti movement right so that is something that is kind of i wouldn't say controversial but there are two schools of thought in that sense so there are people who say graffiti is art graffiti is aesthetic and it should be, you know, art should be accessible to all, it should be free to all. But then on the other hand, there are people who say it's pure vandalism, it's pure, you know, destruction of property. So where do you think your art stands in the middle of that? And how do you think, you know, people should view your artworks with an open mind? So you are creating your artworks with with the kind of open mind and the kind of experiences that you have seen during your war days. But how should a person just entering into your paintings into that world how should they view it with what kind of a mm -hmm. yeah sure i think on, on the first thing you mentioned really and that's um accessible for all but ultimately it's not creating damage to buildings um unless it's got you've got uh, approval um mm -hmm. i think i work with lots of youth groups around vandalism mm -hmm. uh, with the police um and security systems basically purely to say that look you know, it's so expensive to buy these products to be able to create these artworks. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, if you're going to put it onto a, a building you're not allowed to, um, mm -hmm. it, it does it does cause the owner a massive problem. And if it's, uh, and the artwork is not kind of commissioned to the right sense of what mm -hmm. it is, it mm -hmm. also portrays the wrong cultural position in that area. So it can it can bring down house prices. It can you know, lower people's um, you know aesthetics of the house or building or business. So mm -hmm. it's got there's got to be a strategy in in my eyes for it because materials cost so much. Mm -hmm. The ideas and the artistry take a lot of time. You want to do it, and ultimately, you know, if you can do it on a canvas, you can do it on board, you can do it on paper, you can do it on something. Then that's transferable, and someone can see, still see that message. But ultimately, there's a physical thing to it. They can then maybe sell it or gift it. Or it could be in an exhibition to show how they feel. So there's lots of different methodologies for it. So I probably sit in that first um, first conversation part that you said it was that purely it, it should be for for seeing, for expressing, but ultimately. But but on the other side, there is a chance. You know, the graffiti needs to be put in certain areas because other people need to have a, a voice, and it needs to be transferably really quickly. So mm -hmm. it's a yeah, it's a really open in question. It's an interesting one. Um, but ultimately, I, I think for me personally, you know, ethically where I stand, it, you know, it's got to be done in a certain way that I can present it. Um, I can present it in different forms. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah. There's so many ways, isn't there? I think, you know, with multimedia, mm -hmm. you know, like we're on today, you know, being able to create mm -hmm. you know, an instant voice. There's a lot more tools now than there was, you know, um, back in the 40s, 50s, 60s. You know, yeah. so there's lots of tools to be able to use as well as graffiti, um, mm -hmm. you know, poetry, uh, film, um, mm -hmm. depicting interviews, talking, um, you know, broadcasts. Um, yeah, you know, there's so many different tools um, depending on what situation um, and how safe mm -hmm. you, know, you can actually do that as well. Um, the safety of those cultural differences. Um, yeah. So there's lots of things to consider. There's lots of level of bravery, you know. You don't need to be a soldier to be brave. Um, you could be someone going through cancer. You can be someone going through an emotional time with family members. Um, it could be someone that's, you know, far away from home 
um, needed to do what they've got to do. And, you know, bravery comes in many forms. And I think uh, it's just it's unique to that scenario then and what tools you use. I think that's that's op- sometimes opportunist. Yeah, that's there. Um, so I think in one of our earlier conversations, you mentioned that, you know, you're a disciple of Andrew Vicari and Andrew Vicari is actually one of our most esteemed artists at the Arabian Gallery as well. So how did how did that start? And is he an influence in some of your artworks and has his style kind of like um, inspired you to create your unique style in that way? Yeah, well, yeah, no, no, thank you for mentioning Andrew because he was a dear friend and um, he took me under his wing when um, just after I won that award for the Armed Forces and um, um, it, I exhibited in the Mal Galleries in London and uh, when he made an approach through through one of his agents to to meet me and he hosted me in London and uh, uh, we had dinner together in a, in a really prestigious um um venue just off Sotheby's and um, we just discussed art and my principles of that raw immediacy of what I was doing while I was still in the forces and we just talked techniques we talked you know art politics really and um um I I got a chance to see some of his art because it was in the hotels that, that we were in London and um we we just talked about his and you know I wouldn't say he's a direct influence in technique wise because we're probably totally you know Definitely, two yeah. different styles really mm-hmm. um but i did i did take the cultural um influences and the the project uh, mindset because i already had that thought in my head i'd already come off the back of a really successful exhibition mm-hmm. where i had done um i uh, kind of debuted my uh, black graffiti pieces um mm-hmm. uh, about um, tribes of um triad organized gangs in hong kong while i was there in the 90s mm-hmm. so and they all sold in one evening and he was really impressed with that so he, mm-hmm. he tried to tell me about some of the work he he had done you know in 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 different parts of asia in different parts of arabia mm-hmm. and uh I, I i quite like that cultural um influence and the sort of narratives he was trying to bring and understanding of cultures yeah um which was very important in mm-hmm. regards to my progression of projects afterwards Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think Andrew Vicari's style is also, especially the ones that we have at Arabian Gallery, it has that Middle Eastern touch as well, right? Because he was totally. here, yeah, he was here and then he painted portraits, he did like a lot of these scenic stuff with like mosques and the people and like you said, the cultural significances, you can clearly see it in his um, paintings and I think that's also something that really stands out in yours as well. So... Yeah, yeah, yeah mark really, making is really important to Andrew, and definitely. Um, um, and it's very important to me as well to, to get a message over. Yeah, so 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 yeah, so thanks for asking about him, and um, he still plays a huge part in 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 what I do. Um, you know, I I do lessons about him, so I t- I talk about his his artworks to audiences in schools and in education, mm-hmm. um, and for our classes. So we try to keep him alive as much as possible. Um, yeah. in the narrative of his art style because um, when I went to his funeral there were so many people that um, uh, that had been involved in his life um, and some very famous people from you know from Dylan Thomas um, all the way through to Richard Burton and you know we're talking some major stars and he used to tell stories sometimes we used, we'd go for dinner and, and uh, mm-hmm. go to look at an art show or, and he'd be telling me names and and, and top stars and I'd be like you know some times I'd be like no chance but it it was it was true you know it, it, yeah you know yeah and I think yeah the, the kind of legacy that's also there it's like it's immaculate in in that way yeah yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah in terms of the the VC gallery so how did that conceptualize and since the time that you started and since time it's come now so how has it changed and how has it actually impacted people's lives so um why it started is because i seen there was a great need of people to be to cut loneliness and isolation but also to, to because of the health i think that there's a measure of drug and alcohol and loneliness are this uh, are three causes of death you know of major numbers of death loneliness being you know something i could maybe make a difference of if i have a hub where people can come to, to communicate to talk 
to, f- to be made to feel welcome and to give them an opportunity to, to do engagements. And whilst we're doing those engagements is to be able to then signpost them to, to help. You know, it could be alcohol, it could be drugs, it could be debt, it could be counselling, it could be grief, it, you know, it could be, a, you know, addictions of gambling, it could be anything. So, you know, I, I really wanted to make something that was dynamic and and, it's, and from early doors, it's, it's coming up 10 years this December and uh, it's evolved to meet the need. We work with Alzheimer's, dementia, we work with physical and mental disabilities, autism, um, Asperger's. And we have set classes and, 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 and cross pollination between all of these different people together in a creative space. And it's wonderful to be able to see the amount of creativity that, 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 that people can have if they've got a chance to do it in an environment that's encouraging, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and that's been the magic and the serendipity of what I've done. Um, and that's why I've grown from the small little kind of place into a shop front into a school and then to outreaches and to different projects that meet community needs i think because we listen to the community really we don't just say right we want to do this and make a choice between my myself and my staff we kind of keep saying it's it's important to give back to the community and all that but then it's it's also important to be on the ground and actually do it at that point and it's really nice how the vc gallery is doing it in that way and you can actually see how it has touched so many lives. So thank you so much for your time today. And thank we're you. hoping that, you know, the exhibition that you're planning, it, 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 of course, it's already been doing really well, but, you know, it kind of um, reaches more people, more people get to know about it and then they come and visit and then they are also, you know, taken into the story of your artworks. It's, um, it's a great opportunity to be able to be a part of the Arabian Gallery. Um, I've got, you know, a lot to offer in regards to where I am with my graffiti work and um, um, I've got a lot of collectors in the UK and it's a great opportunity to be able to get some international uh, collectors and to give them a chance to collect some of the, the diversity of my work uh, yes. so yeah I'm looking forward to be able to, to try to be a partnership there and yeah. that's really important mm-hmm. yeah. because every art piece that I sell it helps other people as well definitely Thank mm-hmm. you.